Good afternoon, Robert Scriveler. It is October 3rd, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about indicators that September was a very hot month for the United States, particularly for the US East, but also for large sections of the country. And since we have a, a large ridge that has been typically running through Alaska throughout the month of September, we would tend to expect uh, a downstream trough that would tend to cool off the US, but, but overall that appears to not have happened. And I, I wanna talk about why, but before we get into that, let's just talk about some of the indicators that we've seen with regards to temperature across the US and indicators showing that it's it's been really hot in September. Now, first of all, all, all the National Weather Service in Atlanta uh, a couple of days ago issued this statement. What happened to fall? The forecast doesn't hold much hope for fall-like temperatures. Here, how we compare to normal and record temperatures over the last several weeks. And as you can see, the temperatures have remained in the hot range for Atlanta with forecast high and low temperatures for Friday, October 5th at 89 for the high and 69 for the low. And as you can see, the temperature range hasn't started to dip down to along the typical fall trends. It's worth noting that yesterday Atlanta hit 90 degrees uh, according to reports. So very hot Atlanta, but it's not just Atlanta. We're getting reports in from Florida. According to Guy Walton, recent climate blog from yesterday uh, in Jacksonville, September 2018, will go down as one of the warmest and most humid human months, humid months on record, dating back to 1871. And according to Tampa records, it looks like the month of September for 2018 was the hottest on record. And the list goes on and on, including Gainesville and other locations. Now, according to a recent report in the Weather Channel, numerous cities across the eastern U.S. and a number of cities out west recorded their record hottest September for 2018. So what's going on? Well, let's, let's look at some of the surface anomaly maps to try and get an idea of what's happening to the US weather. Now, this is a surface anomaly map for today, uh, initializing for October 3rd, but, but it's worth noting that this trend of heat, this trend of record heat that began in September and this lack of cooling into fall that began in September has continued on for most of the United States into October. So for today, temperature anomalies in the Fahrenheit uh, reading range from around two to three to four to five to up to 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit above average across much of the United States today. And we also see much warmer than normal temperatures running in through Alaska and the Bering and Chukchi Seas uh, associated with a lot of energy transfer into the Arctic which would typically produce a, a down sloping trough in, in, the, in the jet stream in the face of such a high level of heat. And we do have that, but th these, these cooler temperatures are only cropping up through sections of central and western Canada. They're not getting down into the United States. So let's, let's look at the jet stream and see what's happening here. So, so overall, we see that the jet stream across the United States is primarily running from west to east, uh, actually near the Canadian border with no major dips into the US, although what appears to be a, a trough type feature over Canada and an upper level high, a cutoff upper level high over parts of the Arctic as a result of, of a large atmospheric wave that occurred during recent days. So, so there was a large atmospheric wave in the jet stream, which ran all the way up into the Arctic, 
pulling a lot of heat into it. Uh, there began to be an upper level high that was cut off. And by today, the upper level high continues to be cut off. But the trough feature has not really gotten down into the US and nor is it really predicted to, to, to dig in, except for in some instances over the West over the coming days. So, so what's happening? What's, what's happening at the surface? And I wanna go ahead and look at some ocean temperatures to give you an idea of, of what's going on right now and, and why we have so much impetus to, to keep shoving the jet stream toward the north, to, to keep resisting these troughs that are trying to form in, in downslope following this Arctic heat transfer. And what appears to be enabling, at least in part, this resistance to cooler air flooding into the U.S. are warmer than normal oceans, both off the U.S. east and U.S. West Coast. And it's worth noting that temperatures off of parts of the U.S. East Coast range up to four degrees Celsius above average, running from between one and around four degrees Celsius above average, so, so a big departure off the U.S. East Coast. Similar large temperature departures in the Gulf of Mexico in the range of one to maybe nearly three degrees Celsius above average and very warm sea surfaces off the U.S. West Coast ranging from around zero degrees Celsius above average to up to around one to in some locations 2.5 degrees Celsius above average as you get off the Baja region and actually getting much warmer than average as you get off Alaska. So these warmer than normal sea surfaces provide a lot of, of heat into the local atmosphere through through the process of, of just heat bleeding off the waters and, and by pumping warm atmospheric water vapor into the air. Now let's look at atmospheric water vapor levels because atmospheric water vapor does hold quite a lot of inertia. And, and over the US East in particular, where we've seen most of the record high temperatures, atmospheric water vapor levels have been very high and has created this very dense wet air mass that has been difficult to push around. And so, so these warmer than normal sea surfaces as well as a, a prevailing east to west flow and a, and a south to north flow coming up from the Gulf of Mexico have just continued to provide this dense wet air mass that has been difficult for, for jet stream waves to move aside through September and into October and has created a lot of atmospheric inertia, which has resisted the, on, the, the oncoming fall, particularly in the U.S. East, but, but at times also in the U.S. West. And this is what we appear to be seeing now with, with a, a strong moisture flow coming in off the Pacific into California, as well as the remnants of Rosa, which is providing a tropical, wet tropical air mass, a warm tropical air mass over the desert Southwest. And, and all of this, both at the surface and translating into the upper levels of the atmosphere, is providing a, a bit of resistance for, for trough formation, which generally tends to bring in those cold front fronts that, that precipitate the, on, the oncoming of fall and, and tend to tamp temperatures down. So overall, much warmer than normal conditions through September and into early October. And let's, let's see how much time we have. We've got about a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and look at this model. I'm going to go ahead and advance the GFS model so you, you can, this, this is a temperature anomaly model. So you can see that how much warmer than normal temperatures tend to remain in place over large parts of the U.S. Even though a, a trough does try to form out, out west, it does get beaten back a bit over, over the coming days through the persistence of, of this warm, wet air mass that has been clinging on throughout the U.S. East. So, so just an explanation for why it's been so hot in September and why it might continue to be hot throughout parts of the U.S. through October, particularly the U.S. East. And this, this heat and this, these high atmospheric water vapors are related to human-caused climate change. Thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.